Things are beginning to get very, very interesting for the Toronto Blue Jays and Bo Bichette as we have a major Bichette injury update. And a recent report by Ben Nicholson Smith has revealed in the timeline for Bo Bichette, as well as discuss what his future in Toronto may look like. So to break that down in this episode, as well as discuss Bichette speaking out on his season so far, his lack of production, as well as giving some hints on his future in Toronto. So stay tuned for all that in this episode. But before we do, if you're a part of the percentage who aren't subscribed to the channel and you enjoy the Daily Jays content, it would mean the world to myself and Peter if you could hit that subscribe button we're on the road to 14,000 subscribers so thank you guys for your continued support and peter will be back uh tomorrow now we have a lot to go over today Bo Bichette, again, he's been kind of the highlight of the talks as of late. Of course, the Jays have been winning a lot of games. They lost yesterday 6-3 against the Red Sox. But Bo Bichette is officially at Fenway Park. He's really starting to ramp up. And there is a good chance that we see Bo Bichette by the end of this season and maybe even sooner than that. And he came out in a recent article dropped kind of... He spoke out about his season, about just how weird things are, because a lot of fans are starting to turn on Bo Bichette, quite frankly, and it's getting to the point where it's very interesting. Fans are saying that they want him traded. I know Peter and I have kind of been on the fence about it. Peter wants him gone. I'm, uh, I'm a bit more on the fence about it, but let's just dive right into it. So this article dropped less than an hour ago, and this is very interesting. So you can see it says, Yesterday afternoon in the tiny visiting clubhouse at Fenway Park, Bo Bichette looked around his locker. Maybe they forgot about me, he wondered. But no, that wasn't it. And this is very interesting. So we know that Bo Bichette, here's the most recent update. He took ground balls at Fenway Park. He said he's feeling better and working hard to return. A couple of weeks back would be huge if possible, but no one wants to rush this either. We'll work out with the Jays on this road trip. Later, a rehab stint is likely. So he could factor into the Blue Jays this season. Again, they're not really pushing for a wild card spot. They're still eight games back. So there's a good chance that they don't make the playoffs. And the playoffs are kind of wrote off this year for the Jays. But getting him back is good for him. It's good for his mentals. And it's also good for the Blue Jays, again, if they try to trade him. So this is an extremely encouraging update for the Toronto Blue Jays. And he's been out for a while now. He really was hindered with injuries. He's an unbelievable player. He's a great hitter. He's been a guy that we've discussed on this channel at nauseum that very good player. He has his deficiencies in some ways, but very, he had some things to say. And let's just dive right into it. But that is the major injury update. There is some other stuff within this article, but there's a lot more to dive into. Now, feel free to pause and read all of this. Uh, ben Nicholas Smith, you can also check out the article that he posted today. Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go over some of the main quotes. He said, maybe they forgot about me, but a closer inspection in the clubhouse showed that he hadn't been forgotten quite, in fact, the opposite. And that is talking about how he didn't actually have a uh, locker at the clubhouse, but he had a veteran locker, Bichette said. And he was like, whoa, this is weird. So just an interesting thing that kind of popped out. He didn't realize he had a veteran's locker, so he came after an injury stint. Obviously, it hasn't happened to him before with a veteran's locker. And then he got that. But he spoke out on the season he's having. He spoke out on what his kind of expectation is and just the overall kind of gauge of how he's feeling this year. Because like I keep mentioning, it's been an extremely weird year for the Blue Jays. It's been an extremely weird year for Bo Bichette. And he hasn't spoken out and really talked about his season at all up until uh, today or whenever this was uh, this was dropped recently. So it's been really cool to see a lot of the guys stepping up and showing what they can do. That's been fun to watch. He said, honestly, my mindset is that whatever I can do to help, especially not playing right now, I'm here to do that if anybody needs me. And we know that he said the Jays, uh, the Bobachet, sorry, uh, Bobachet joined the Jays in Boston and he plans to continue a running progression that will hopefully lead him to a rehab assignment. He obviously has a calf injury and a return to the majors this season. Ideally, he'd return with at least a couple weeks left to spare and look like the version of himself who ended up on MVP ballots each of the last three seasons. And then John Schneider came out and basically just said, we miss him. It's been weird without him because he's just been here for what feels like so long, right in the middle of what we're doing. His role isn't going to change with us whenever he does get back. He's right in the middle of it and we want him to just continue to be him. So interesting stuff there. Obviously, he seems like as much flack as Bo Bichette does get for from fans for whatever reason, whether it's because you think that he doesn't, you know, doesn't have the work ethic, whatever it ends up being. The fact of the matter is, from people who are inside the Jays organization, whether that's Buck Martinez, whether that's Dan Shulman, they all say that Bo Bichette is a much different person than what people think and fans perceive him to be. And this quote kind of helps emphasize that. I mean, he's saying that even though he's not playing, he wants to do whatever he can to help the young guys, help Leo Jimenez, help all of these young guys that are coming up into the system. Even Will Wagner, we've seen Addison Berger, Joey LaPapita, whoever it is, Bo Bichette wants to help them out. Because at the end of the day, Bo Bichette wants to win. Winning has always been the priority for Bo. It always will be the priority for Bo. And if the Jays can put themselves in a position, if they go out and they get one of the big three sluggers, which of course we're going to be discussing again at nauseum throughout the whole offseason. But guys like Teoscar Hernandez, uh, uh, Pete Alonso, someone of that nature, 
if they go out and get a big thumper in the top four, and then they, of course, can maybe have a conversation with Bo Bichette about his role. And John Schneider basically made it clear his role isn't going to change, which obviously makes sense. He is the shortstop for the Toronto Blue Jays. He's the best possible option. So if he comes back, let's say, in a couple weeks, and he wants to play every day or whatever, depending how you know the rehab goes, he's going to be in that lineup, probably in that two spot, depending where they put everybody else. Like He's not going to be a guy who starts down at the six or seven spot. He's going to be thrown right back into the fire because he has an MVP ceiling. We know his defense has some work to do, but he seems like a guy that just wants to win now. If that means that the Jays don't want or don't think that Bo Bichette and don't think he's going to factor into that timeline of what the Jays are trying to do, we know that Ross Atkins came out and said that they're trying to compete next season. Bo Bichette gives him the best ability to win if they keep him and he's healthy. That being said, I'm not a completely opposed to a retool either. And that's kind of where this article goes into. It says, where that leads, no one knows. Not Bichette, not Ross Atkins, not anyone. It's simply too early to say. A trade is from Ben Nicholson-Smith. A trade can't be ruled out, but is no, by no means a certainty either. The Jays who want to win in 2025 and it's hard to improve by parting with a career 290 hitter who averages about 5 war per season. Those questions are for another day. For now, it's a matter of making progress bit by bit and getting ever closer to returning to the major leagues. Just trying to be as smart as I can be. So that's the more insight there from Ben Nicholson Smith, a bit of a trade update on that front. There's just a lot here. And again, it does. it's not a certainty, but also, of course, from Ben, a trade can't be ruled out. And we've seen that from a bunch of different reporters. Now I covered it yesterday from Jeff Passan. We have Bob Nightingale and now Ben Nicholson Smith is coming out. Is that the point where ultimately what happens with Bo Bichette is going to be up to the front office and Bo Bichette as well because if he's going to leave in 2025 after the season no matter what even if unless they win the world series then you might have to part away with the asset early part with part away with him in this offseason in this offseason sorry before he is pending free agency at the trade deadline basically when he's going to hit it at the end of the season so there's a lot to go over regarding that but for now the most important thing, and Boba Shed said, just trying to be as smart as I can be, but I'm happy with where it's at right now. Where it's at, meaning his injury, meaning maybe where he is with his teammates, everything like that. It doesn't seem like a guy who's super eager to leave, which is why fans who are upset maybe take a step back and just see what he can do over the rest of the year. But at the same time, I do understand it. He has been an inch, he's had a brutal season, and there's at times where it looks like he's not super engaged and he doesn't want to be in Toronto. And if that's the case, then the, like I mentioned in yesterday's video, Ross Atkins and Boba Shett need to have an adult adult conversation and say, Hey, do you want to be here? Yes or no. And if the answer is no, ship him off and uh, go from there. And he had one last thing to say. It's the toughest thing for me was the last injury. I was in a good place, ready to have a great second half, felt confident about it. And really there was never any doubts for me throughout the season that I was going to figure it out and have the season. Everybody expected me to have. And ultimately he, uh, he didn't. And that's unfortunate. Is it because of injuries? Is it because of a lack of engagement? We don't know. What we do know is that the Jays have some big decisions to make, and it's going to be a very interesting offseason, and even just the rest of the season to see if Boba Shett can come back to his old form. But that'll wrap it up. Let us know in the comments what your thoughts are on this. A lot is going on in Jays land, and hopefully they can take care of business tonight against the Boston Red Sox. We'll see you tomorrow.